Hello everyone, welcome to another um, video discussion in Highway Engineering. I am Engineer Jay, I am a civil engineer and I am also a engineering professor. And in this uh, video, we will try to discuss or we will try to understand one of um, horizontal curves that we use in highway design. So aside from the reverse curve, compound curve, and simple curve, we have what we call spiral curve. So by the way, what is spiral curve? So spiral curve, this is a curve used to provide a gradual transition from a straight line or tangent to the full curvature of a circular curve. It begins very flat with a radius of infinity and increases in sharpness as the circular curve is approached along the alignment. So in other words, spiral curve is when we have a um, changing radius in our curve. So that means we have from the, the beginning of our spiral curve in which our radius here is very large. So that means we have a smoother curvature and it becomes sharper and sharper until such time that it approaches a um, circular curve. So that means there is a gradual transition in the curve. In other words, the curvature changes and the radius changes infinitely. So that is spiral cur curve. Unlike sa simple curve and compound curve, we have a constant curvature because we have a circular curve. But for spiral curve again, this is not a circular curve. Hence, there is a, ch or there is a rate of change in the curvature of our curve. And this is the example of spiral curves as what you can see. We have um, the spiral tangents as what you can see. We have a very small changing curvature. So this can be approximately equal to a straight line. And then at this point, this is the start of our circular curve. Okay. So from TS to SC, this is our spiral uh, curve. Okay, so we have this element of our spiral curve. We have TS, this is a tangent to spiral, so this line. And we also have SC, so this is a spiral to a circular curve. So from spiral curve, or this is the point of our, or this is the point of the end of our spiral curve and the beginning of our circular curve. We have also CS, this is a circular curved spiral. So this is the end or the right end of our circular curve and the beginning of our spiral curve. Okay, so this is our spiral curve. And we also have the spiral tangent or the ST. So this is the end of our um, spiral curve. And we also have the length of spiral, that is LS. So this is the length of this curve here. Okay, this is our LS. We have also IC. Now, IC is just the angle of intersection or the angle of our circular curve, or that is our simple curve. We also have the radius of a circular curve. Okay, so we already know how to compute RC. We have already um, done with a simple curve formula. We have also the external distance of the spiral tangent, which um, the distance from PI to the simple curve. And we also have the length of the spiral curve, the distance of from TS to PI, so this one. We also have the spiral angle of intersection or the I sub S in which um, this is the angle, the angle of the entire curve in which we have the um, we have to add the spiral angle at SC and the angle of intersection of our simple curve. So I see I sub S here is the total angle of our spiral curve. We have also phi sub S that is the spiral angle at SC. So this one and the length of throw that is the distance of um, if we extend our simple curve, the length of is the distance of this point to the tangent. Okay. Basically, these are the elements of a spiral curve, and each element has 
its own um, formula to familiarize. So these are the formulas. So the first one here, we have the spiral angle. This is the formula in which L squared over 2RC times LS, we multiply it by 180 over pi to convert it into degree. In which L here, this is the distance from TS to any point on our um, spiral curve. And we also have the I or the deflection angle in which we have just the one-third of the angle of our spiral. Basically, if we were referring to the simple curve, so that is the D, D over 2, or that is the deflection angle. But since we have a varying um, varying degree of curvature, so we can compute the deflection angle at any point in our spiral as phi over t or that is the one-third of our um, spiral at any point in our curve and we also have the offset distance so that that is the distance from the tangent um, to any point in our um, spiral curve and that is a perpendicular to the tangent line and that is we have l cube over s times r c or it's the radius of the simple curve times the length of the spiral. Then we also have the distance from TS to any point on the spiral along the spiral tangent in which we have Y is equal to L minus L raised to the 5 over 40R C squared L sub S squared. So if this is our Y, let's say this is our Y, our X is this one. Okay, and that is we have perpendicular to our um, tangent. We also have the relationship between the phi or the angle in the spiral and the length. Length here again, that is the distance um, from TS to any point in our spiral curve and the, in which the formula is phi over phi S Again, and this phi sub s here, it is the spiral angle at sc, okay? And this phi here at the numerator, that is the spiral angle at any point in the spiral curve. And this equals to L, that is the length of the curve from TS to any point over LS, that is the length of the spiral, and raised to um, 2. And this is the relationship of the angle and the length. And we have the length of the throw in which that is from this point to our spiral tangent. Okay, and we have approximately that is L2 over 2 that is um, represented by rho. And the formula is Xc. Xc here, um, this is the, the offset distance from the tangent to point Sc. Okay, so this is our Xc. And we also have the spiral angle of intersection. So we know that the entire or the total angle is just basically twice of this, the angle at SC and the angle of circular curve. This is twice since we also have um, phi S here. Okay? And we also have the length of spiral tangent. So TS is just the length of spiral over 2 plus the um, length of throw plus the radius of the circular curve times the tangent of the um, IS or that is the that this one is the total angle over 2 okay so that is the um, formula for the tangent distance and the formula for external distance we have this rho plus the RC or that's the radius of the circular curve times second of the um, total angle IS or the spiral angle of intersection over 2 minus the radius of the circular curve. Now we have also the rate of change of normal acceleration. So since we have a changing curvature in our spiral curve, um, our acceleration changes at the same time. And that is the formula C is equal to the um, velocity cube over the LR. Then we also have the desirable length of spiral given the value of the 
um, velocity and the radius of curvature. So we have the length of spiral. This is the desired according to the velocity in which we have 0.036 k cube over RC. K here, this one should be in terms of kilometers per hour. So our K here is always in terms of kilometers per hour. So by uh, knowing the velocity or by knowing the length of the spiral, we would know um, what should be the maximum velocity in order to have a safe passing you know, through our spiral curve. And we also have this E here, or that is the super elevation. Now E um, is utilized or is adapted in order to resist centrifugal force. So, like for example, if this is our cross-section of our highway, now if we have our car passing through this point or passing normal to the screen, like for example, having embankment on the left most of our pavement, that would resist or that would prevent our car from being pushed due to centrifugal force and these are the elements that we need to familiarize in dealing with spiral curve now let's try to apply this formula in a sample problem we have this one the length of the spiral curve is 100 meters with a radius of 250 meters at the central curve now the tangent passing through ts and st intersect each other at 60 degrees. The first question is determine the offset distance from the tangent on the first quarter point of the spiral. But before that, let's draw our spiral curve. So basically, this would be our spiral curve in which our spiral curve begins at TS to SC and then we also have spiral curve on the other side which is from CS to ST okay and we have given here that the length of our spiral curve so therefore that's the length from TS to SC is equal to 100 meters correct and we have also known that the radius of our central curve or our simple curve here is equal to 250 meters so if this is our um, simple curve so our radius here is 250 meters and the tangents um, of ts and st intersects at 60 degrees so we have here um, this our is here is equal to 60 degrees so basically that would also be the angle from TS to ST. Okay? So that is the central angle of the entire curve. So we have this angle here, which is IS or equal to 60 degrees. Now going back to the first question, we have to determine the offset distance from the tangent on the first quarter point of the spiral. Since our length of spiral is 100 meter, so the first quarter point is at 25 meter. So we have um, four, of course, that is we divide 100 meters here into four points, and that is we have at 25 meters, at 50 meter, and lastly we have at 75 meters mark. Okay? so. Since we are asked to compute the offset distance of the first quarter point, so offset distance again, that is the length from the tangent to the point on the curve, and that line is perpendicular to the tangent line. So we have this x here, that is our offset distance. So that is our x. So to compute that, we apply the formula for our offset distance. We have x is equal to L cube over 6RC LS. And we have um, known this already from our previous discussion. And at x or x3, that is the, and at the offset distance of the first quarter point is equal to the L, that is the distance from TS to that point, which is 25. That is cube over 6 
RC here, that's the length of the central radius or the radius of the central curve, which is 250. And LS here, that's the length of the spiral, which is 100. And this would give us X1 here is equal to 0 0.1042 meters. And this is our answer for question number one. Now for question number two, we determine the spiral angle at third quarter point. So we know that our third quarter point here is at 75 meter mark and the spiral angle refers from TS. So basically our spiral angle here is this one. This is our phi. Okay. And that phi there is equal to from the formula we have phi is equal to L squared over 2RCLS. So we have the spiral angle at the third quarter point which is equal to L here the distance from TS which is 75 squared over 2 RC is 250 times 100. But we convert this into degree by multiplying it by 180 degrees over pi radian. And that we have um, phi or the spiral angle at the third quarter point is equal to 6.446 degrees. So this is now our answer for question number two which asked for the spiral angle at the third quarter points. Now for question number three. We determine the deflection angle at the third quarter point from the tangent to spiral at TS. So if you remember in our compound curve, um, deflection angle is just basically half of the degree of curvature. But in this case, the deflection angle from TS to the third quarter points, which is this one, is equivalent to I is equal to the angle at, of the spiral at third quarter point over 3. Okay, so therefore, for question number 3, we have I is equal to phi at the third quarter points over 3. We have I, 3 is equal to 6.446 degrees divided by 3. This would give us the deflection angle at the third quarter points equals to 2.149 degrees. And this is now our answer for question number three. Now for our fourth question, determine the length of the short tangent of the spiral curve. So our short tangent here, that is the um, tangent from SC to the point of our spiral curve. Let's say the point of intersection of our short tangent is at vertex one. Okay, so this would be our short tangent and this would be our long tangent for our spiral curve. So since we have a varying curvature in our spiral curve, so our long tangent is not equal to our short tangent. But how are we going to compute for ST? So to compute for ST, we just need to compute first um, the offset distance from SC to the um, any point on our tangent, which is we have here xc. xc here refers to the offset distance um, from the tangent to the point of sc, okay, or the um, spiral to central curve um, curvature, okay. So we have to compute xc here, and then we also have to compute the angle at this point. So let's say that's our phi s, okay, or the um, spiral angle at SC. Now to compute for phi SC, and by the way, phi, phi sub S or the spiral angle at SC is basically equal to this angle here, okay? And this is also phi sub S or the spiral angle at SC. So we have to compute XC and phi sub S. So as what you can see here, we can isolate this triangle. So we have um, this triangle here. This is our XC. This is our short tangent. And this is our um, point SC. And this is our vertex 1. So we compute XC here. Now we know that the formula for X is equal to 
L cube over 6RCLS. But since um, XC here um, is refers to point SC, so we can change L here equals to L sub S, or it's the length of the spiral. So we have X equal to L sub S cube over 6RC ls so this is our xc and then we can uh, cancel ls so we would have l s raised to the 2 over 6 rc now take note this is now the formula if we want to compute for the offset distance to uh, sc okay so therefore we have um, xc is equal to 100 squared over 6 times 250 this would give us the value of our um, offset distance to SC and that is we have 6.6667 meters and now to compute for the spiral angle at SC so we have to use the formula for phi and that is we know that phi is equal 2 L squared over 2 R C L S but since we are referring here at SC so we can change L is equal to L S so we have phi at SC is equal to our L here is L S squared over 2 R C L S so we can cancel out L S and the remaining would be ls alone in the numerator. So we have phi sub s is equal to l sub s over 2rc. This would give us l sub s equal to 100 over 2 times 250. Then we multiply it by 180 degrees over pi to convert this one into degree. So we have here um, the angle at sc or the spiral angle at sc is equal to 11.459 degrees so going back to the triangle we know that sine of v sub s is equal to x sub c over st so we can say then that st is equal to our x sub c here is 6.6667 over st here is equal over sine of 11.459 degrees and this would give us ST here equals to 3.557 meters so this now our answer for question number 4 now for our um, fifth question is determine the length of the long tangent of the spiral so we have to compute LT here but to compute for LT we just we need to compute for YC and compute uh, for Y here and uh, compute the difference and that would give us the value of our LT so we can compute Y by just uh, using the um, cosine relationship we have a cosine of phi s and this equal to y over st and that we know y is equal to st cosine of the spiral angle at sc okay and we know that lt here is equal to yc minus y so we need to compute the value of yc here first but yc is derived from the formula of y is equal to l minus l raised to the 5 over 40 rc squared ls squared. But since again we are refer referring here at sc since our yc here is from ts to the point of offset to sc. So therefore we have to... Um, change L here equals to LS. So we have our YC is equal to LS minus LS raised to the 5 over 40 
R C squared L S squared and we can cancel out L S squared and in the numerator we have L S cubed. So therefore the formula for Y C is equal to L S minus L S cubed over 40 R sub C squared. So we have Y C is equal to 100 meters minus 100 cube over 40 RC is 250 squared. So we have the value of YC equals to 99.6 meters. So going back to this equation, we have YC here 99.6 meters minus ST. Now ST is equivalent to 33.557 cosine of the spiral angle at SC which is 11.459 degrees this would give us um, the length of the long tangent equals to 66.712 meters so this is now our answer for question number 5 now for our sixth question is determine the length of throw for the spiral curve and we know that the formula for the length of throw is rho is equal to xc over 4 and xc here we know that the value is 6.6667 we have computed that already we divide it by 4 so we have rho is equal to 1.6667 meters and this is our answer for question number 6. Okay? And for question number 7, we compute for the length of spiral tangents. A spiral tangent is the length from TS to PI. Okay, this one is our PI. And we have the formula for that one, and that is we know that TS is equal to LS over 2 plus um, rho plus RC. Then we have a tangent of IS over 2. So we have here um, TS is equal to 100 over 2 plus the value of the throw in which we have here 1.6667 plus the radius of the central curve or the circular curve we have 250 then tangent of um, is here is 60 degrees over 2 and that we have ts equals to 195.3 meters okay so this is now our, our answer for question number 7. Now for question number 8, we compute for the external distance of the spiral. So we compute this length from PI to the um, point of our circular curve. So this is our external distance. That, let's say that's our ES. So we have the formula E sub S is equal to the rho plus r c then second of i s over 2 minus r c okay so we have e s is equal to the rho that is 1.6667 plus r c here is 250 now second is equivalent to 1 over cosine of i s we have 60 over 2 minus 250 this would give us the external distance which is 40.6 meters so this now our answer for question number eight now for our last question we are asked to compute the maximum velocity that a car could pass through the spiral easement curve. So what should be the velocity that a vehicle should have as that vehicle is passing from TS to SC? Okay, so that is to avoid accident. So we have, we have known the formula for the desirable length which is LS is equal to 0.036 k cube over rc 
which is our k here is in terms of kilometers per hour so now we know that our l is here is 100 so we have a fixed uh, fixed length of our spiral curve and this equals to 0 0.036 our k is a known that is the velocity that we are computing here RC is 250 so our K here is equal to 88.56 kilometers per hour so this is the maximum velocity of the car that passes through the spiral easement curve and that ends the computation for spiral curves so basically this is just merely a um, formula uh, application so you just need to familiarize the formula and then know the concepts know where or which value should you input in the formula okay so that ends this lesson on spiral curve thank you for listening but please don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you and have a great day